we had an amazing response to our last video regarding my uh, little rant about not being able to roam across the countryside as I wish. Yeah, really positive comments in the main, you know, from both sides of the uh, opinion. Um, yeah, so uh, really enjoyed the discussion we had with you all in the comments below. So uh, yeah, please keep the comments coming. We absolutely love them. We love responding to them. They make our day. They give us a bit of a giggle. And um, yeah, keep us entertained. As a YouTube creator, we get to see all the analytics of uh, our videos and uh, who's watching them in what country and uh, how well it's doing compared to other videos, etc. And the channel's growing really nicely. But um, almost half of people that are watching our videos aren't subscribers. Uh, and it helps getting our videos to a wider audience if you do become a subscriber. And also if you give us a thumbs up, it's really important. The more thumbs up we get, the uh, wider audience we get. And therefore, uh, as a knock-on effect, we get a bit more money out of Google. So yeah, please do subscribe thumbs up, hit that notification bell to get reminders of uh, when the next video is up. Thanks very much. Well, I had a bit of a rude awakening this morning. Nice cup of coffee in a snuggly bed. It was really frosty out, so Richard gone out to do some drone flying. And I'm snuggled in with my book. Crash on the roof of the boat. What happened? Had a crash landing with the drone. So he's broken the rotors here and here. And uh, as you can see, I've got my registration number on this. I've been a good boy and registered and paid for my license. And um, it's, it was cold out there this morning and murky, very frosty. And uh, I started the drone off and it came on the screen. Battery life will be shortened because of the cold weather. That's it. So I'm flying it and uh, I thought I only need to go up for a couple of minutes. That's all just to get a bit of atmosphere, atmospheric shots. Next thing I know, the uh, gadget here, the controller, the controller <laughs> is telling my phone that it's going to land. And I thought, okay, let it land. I've done my footage. We're about 50 feet up, 40 feet up, and I'm looking at the screen and just about to switch off the um, video recording. The noise of the drone stops, and fortunately, it just this is just fluke. The drone happened to be over the boat, about 20 feet up plus, and the, it just falls out of the sky and just watch it come down, bang, crash on the roof of the boat. So I don't know if the drone's okay. I, don't, I haven't fixed the rotors on it. I haven't started it up again and flown it, obviously. So fingers crossed, we're gonna have a drone. We've heard of this before. Um, drones just falling out of the sky, so fortunately, or hopefully it's okay but fortunately it landed on top of the boat but two three feet away it would oh, have been in the canal, in the canal. and that would yeah. have been the end of it and uh i didn't know what had happened i knew it wasn't that bad because well, i either couldn't hear any bad language <laughs> so i knew it wasn't that bad or else you'd fallen in so i had to whiz out of bed and go and have a look and see what had happened um it's making noises. Yeah, it seems to be starting up okay. And you have got spare blades, haven't you? I think I've got for spare it. blades. Yeah. So, let's so hope for the best. fingers crossed. Watch this space.
This section's just been cut out of this rock. Amazing feat of engineering when you think about it in those days. This is North Gate Staircase Locks. There's three of them all together in the middle of Chester here. So this one's full and the next one has to be empty for us to go down so we can fill the next lock up with the water that we're in. But looking at this, this is unbelievable. It's so empty. I've never seen anything like it. And there's a, a meter on the side there with yellow green and red so I guess it has to be in the green and the yellow before we can uh, proceed so I've got to fill this one up by the looks of it more than normal well Fran's going down and there's still a lot of water to go the sill still showing on the next chamber. So we might have to send some more water down from the uh, canal above. We'll see. So I've just opened that top paddle to send a bit more water down because there's not enough water in the top chamber to get above the sill in the bottom one. Well, it's too early in the morning. Should have thought this through before we came through. Fran was actually on the bottom then, the boat wasn't rocking. She was a bit perturbed, but we're all right. Just raise up this pound again a little bit so we can uh, get way above the sill in the chamber below. Bit of a scary experience. This is the third time I've been up and down in this lock. We're in um, just approaching a staircase, staircase lock and uh, it appears there's a fault with it. The middle pound was completely empty when we came. So I came into the top pound which was full, started emptying to fill the next pound and I got grounded. The boat was just stuck on the bottom. So Richard had to trickle some more water in from behind me to refloat the boat. Um, while we try and get enough water in the next pound so that I can let this water out and go in. A uh, CRT guy has just turned up and apparently there is a fault with this lock but there's no notification or no warning so I, I could easily just have been stuck on the ground here so at the moment Rich is waiting to still let more water into the next pound so I can float through safely and, um, and we're trying to let some water in from behind me so that I can stay afloat <laughs> It's all a bit scary, I don't like it. So there's enough water in there now to fill the middle chamber. So I'm just going to close this paddle. It's been trickling water in and uh, proceed on. So now if you can see, we're going up again. I think this is the fourth time I've gone up. Um, floating nicely now. I've got into the stage I keep rocking the boat from side to side to make sure I'm still floating. Water pouring in behind me. So apparently the middle chamber has a really bad leak in it. That's why it was empty. So really we shouldn't have entered the top lock until we'd really filled that one up considerably. But no harm done, we're just trickling water in from behind to fill the middle chamber up. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, CRT volunteers turned up, giving us a hand. Well now it feels like I'm on the blooming sea. So they've had to open this pound from the back. Again, to let even more water in, because I'm yet again grounded. I think this is the most stressful bit of boating I've done. Get a lot more into the 
one above, don't we? Yeah, yeah, she's worrying about getting wedged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna, gonna shut that down. Well, it's about half an hour and we're still not through. Really low on water in this middle lock. So um, we're having to fill it up and empty it and fill it up again. But we're nearly there, I think. It's my fault, really. We should have uh, not gone into the lock before I'd filled that middle pound up comfortably. And no matter how many hundreds of locks you do in the course of a year, you still learn. <laughs> I'm not paying attention enough. How are you doing, Fran? Oh, fine. Yeah. How many times can you go up and down in one lock? <laughs> water coming in all directions, no water underneath you. Yeah. It's possibly the scariest moment that I've had on the boat. Didn't like it. But we're alright, hopefully. Alright now. So we made it through. <laughs> we just stopped off uh, to fill up with water. So how are you feeling, friend? Oh, I'm okay now. It's just, just so frustrating and um, really scary. I don't think. Okay, yeah. right. I don't think I've ever been up and down so many times in the locks. I mean, the theory with the staircase locks is that as long as the top, well, I thought. Correct me if I'm wrong, if the top lock is full, the bottom lock is empty, you take your water with you. So as you go down into the first step of the staircase lock, you take your water and then you take your water down again. So it should have been fine. But we didn't know that the middle pound was leaking and faulty and had completely emptied. Yeah, there was no water in it whatsoever. To be honest, in retrospect, it, I shouldn't have let Fran come through the top lock. We should have emptied that and then refilled it so there was sufficient water in the middle because uh, at one point Fran actually grounded <laughs> the bottom of the top lock. I could feel the front of the boat and I realised I wasn't moving at all and that was when I did first of all, but up until then Richard said oh it'll be fine and I thought we'll just go with the flow because I'm the one that normally panics and you're nearly always right. Um, really? But then I could see that the front of the boat wasn't moving at all and I had a vision of the front getting stuck, the back going down, the exhaust pipe or whatever going under the water and that's it, me and the dogs climbing up on the roof. <laughs> but uh, it's all well, it's just a lesson learned. Yeah, it's just, it's, just it's, you go through hundreds and hundreds of locks uh, in, you know, in your course of the cruise in the <clears> system. And you do get a bit blasé, I think, and, uh, you know, there's been other vloggers who have reported getting wedged in a lock and uh, stuck in locks because the fender's on the side of the boat and... That was the other thing that worried me, because when they started refilling my lock from the back, so there's water going out at the front still to fill the, the front pound, water coming at the back and the boat was being swung sideways. And these lock sides, they're so old, and as they, you go down, they're very in and out. And that was the other thing that I was worried about, that as I was coming back up again, I was going to get wedged, because I know people have done, but that was obviously fine. So, the lesson of the day is don't rush, keep your cool, and uh, pay attention. Three things I wasn't doing. <laughs> fortunately, there was a, a volunteer, we would have worked it out without him, to be honest, but fortunately there was a volunteer there that knew these locks, knew the problems with them. Yeah. Um, and knew there was a fault and what we needed to do and just an extra pair of hands to help you doing the paddles yeah. front and back. And the thing is, the, the, the reason he was here, they don't uh, volunteer over the winter, the CRT don't allow them to volunteer over winter. So he was only here because uh, he was on a volunteering litter picking day. So uh, he came to the rescue and it's a good job he did because that middle gate, opening up that gate in the middle, I couldn't do it on my own because there was, it was leaking so much, it wasn't emptying completely. So with that much to go, I couldn't open the gate and uh, fortunately him and another guy came over and uh, with three of us got it open. So we live to fight another day. <laughs> right, so uh, filling up with water and then we're going to go and walk around the walls of Chester. Yes. A bit of respite. Yes. I can't even go in the pub. Well, you can, but you have to have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> mm.
So we're just about to take a walk around the city walls here in Chester and uh, apparently Chester is the only city now that has re defensive walls going all around the city and parts of it going back to Roman times nearly 2,000 years ago. And it is complete so you can walk along the ramparts or whatever you want to call it, the whole wall which go across the shopping centre I believe in some parts. Let's go then. Block of flats. <laughs> the oldie woldy canal. What do you think of Chester, Fran? Well, so far it's gorgeous. Really, really lovely, really nicely set out. So we're just about, maybe not even a quarter of the way around the wall. The cathedral behind us is stunning. It looks really quite small for a cathedral, but really beautiful. Um, it's open for visitors. We've just passed a falconry centre and there's a display about to start, but we've got the dogs with us, so maybe not a good idea. Mm. We'll have to come back for that. The flowers in the cathedral gardens, spring flowers are all beginning to open up. It's stunning. It's beautiful, Absolutely beautiful stunning. town. Well worth uh, a visit. But we're heading out tomorrow on our way to Ellesmere Port, but um, we'll come, we've got to come back this way, so we're going to do a thorough video of it all, aren't we? We'll do the cathedral, um, we'll walk around the gardens. I think there's art gallery, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's art gallery and we'll museum. We'll have a, a good yeah. look round and do another lot of filming when we've got more time just to wander. It's a bit cold today, we've got the dogs with us. We've had a stressful morning, so... Uh, <laughs> you have. <laughs> but yeah, we'll do the rest of it when we come back and, and do it thoroughly. Yep. All right, onwards and upwards. Oh, that's the walk done around the walls. Very nice it was too. It was really good. So uh, time now for a hot cup of coffee. Yes. Or something. If only it was February. <laughs>